hi guys welcome to my channel I'm so glad that you're here today um, I'm feeling much better uh, if you watched my last video I was a little bit sick um, but I've honestly I'm just gonna be honest with you guys um, I have been feeling kind of down and a little bit sad and I think it's because the holidays are coming <laughs> and the holidays just are hard as a Christian single so I just wanted to put it out there that it has been kind of a rough go and I actually wrote a poem um, and I'm going to share it with you guys it's kind of long and it has nothing to do with this video <laughs> But it was just something that God um, kind of spoke to me, so I wanted to share it with you guys. <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't suck too bad. And anyways, it says, Remember, fear is not welcome here. Remember me, your first love. Remember how I knocked on your heart's door. Remember me now in your tears. Remember the valleys I carried you through. Remember that it was me, it wasn't you. Remember how I crushed your enemies. Remember how I cleansed you from a broken youth. Remember how I set you free from past chains. Remember the freedom of when you first proclaimed my name. Remember love lost, broken hearts, and hurt friendships. Remember my love healed all those wounds. Remember my words that com comforted you through the night. Remember when you felt alone in the fight. Remember in that moment you cried out to me. Remember I said, here I am. Remember you said, please hear me. Hear me, Lord. Here I am, broken yet again, chasing worldly things that bring me to the throne again broken here, here I lay, comfort now, here I stay, bleeding out as before, crying for heaven's door, lost and lonely, been here before, yet I need you all the more, come now, Lord, wrapped in pain and suffering, suffering still, I hear your voice again, remember me, for I am here, I will heal your heart again, and God's just really been ministering to me that no matter what season I'm in, he is still there. And I need to just remember his faithfulness to me when Satan is just trying to get me down. He knows how to kind of hit me where he knows um, it will just get me down. And I've been praying and just trying to dwell on the word of the Lord so that is a very long intro into nothing that I'm talking about today. <laughs> um, so hopefully you're still here. If you are, thank you for still watching. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was a fear. Um, I wanted to do kind of a series that fears that Christian singles have and one of the fears that someone commented on my um, channel was just the fear that you would have to marry someone that you were not attracted to and this is a legitimate fear and <laughs> I thought it was funny when I read the comment because I was like oh I'm not the only one who has this fear <laughs> That wasn't even what I was thinking about doing, so I was excited when I read that. But anyways, um, I'm not excited that it's like a fear, but I'm excited that someone had a really good idea. Um, and I think it's a real fear because we are constantly told, especially as Christians, um, just that looks aren't what matter, which is true, and that you need to like kind of get to know someone before you just kick them to the curb. But I wanted to go over a few passages of scripture to really see what the Bible has to say about looks. 
um, and specifically kind of like the dating scene. Um, so Song of Solomons is a really smoking, spicy uh, piece of scripture. If you've never read through there, you'd be like, dang, this stuff is in the Bible. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to read a couple passages uh in chapter 1, verse 16, it says, How handsome you are, my beloved. Oh, how charming. So that kind of just gives way to she thought he was handsome, all right? And um, I'm going to look up some more. I just had that one written down in my notes. I took notes. But I also wanted to look up some scripture as well. So in one fifteen says, How beautiful you are, my darling. How beautiful your eyes are as doves. So, um, and then the Song of Solomon, Song of Songs, I four seven. All beautiful you are, my darling. There is no flaw in you. And last one, seven verse one, says, How beautiful your sandaled feet, O princess daughter. Your graceful legs are like jewels, the work of craftsmen's hands. He was checking out her legs. <laughs> Which I think is just so perfect. Um, so right there it is very clear that there is a physical attraction between these two lovebirds in the song of um songs and i wanted to go over some kind of pillars in the faith who also were attracted to each other um so genesis chapter 12 verses 11 <clears throat> and 12. So Genesis chapter 12. Don't mind me, don't mind me. Um, I'm just going to start in verse 10. Now there was a famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. <laughs> she was so pretty, people would be killing her husband over her. <laughs> um, and so Genesis 24, uh, verse 15 and 16. It says, before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was a daughter of Bethel, son of Milcah, who was a wife of Abraham's brother Nor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up again. And so this is just another story about a beautiful woman gracing the presence of a son of the Lord, uh, which I think is really awesome. That's the story of Rebecca and Isaac, if you want to dive in deeper to Genesis 24. And Genesis 29, let's see, 29 verse... 16 and 17. Now, Laban, Laban, how do you say that, had two daughters. <clears throat> the name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I will work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. So this woman, she was so lovely and so beautiful that this man was willing to work seven years. And if you know the story, you know that is not the full story because he ends up being tricked and has to work even more. Um, but that's not the part of this uh, story that I want to talk about. Um, so go back if you're interested in learning more about that and you'll see what happens. Um, and here's uh, in the flood, uh, um, when men began to increase in number on the earth, the daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. 
that was Genesis 6, 1 and 2. I'm going to read this again. The son of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. So it was like the Lord was like, <laughs> he's making these women beautiful because he wants to have some babies around who love Jesus. <laughs> um, and then Esther, guys, I love the story of Esther. If you ever want to be encouraged, you just sit down and read the book of Esther and she is like a powerhouse of the faith. Um, it's a really great story. So Esther chapter two, verse seven says, Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This girl was also known as Esther. <clears throat> she was lovely in form and features featureless and Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. And if you know the story of Esther, she was brought before the king because she was just smoking. And um, I just wanted to share all of these because I think it's really important to know that the Bible definitely talks about attraction. It talks about um, beautiful women, handsome men, <laughs> um, the story of David when he was introduced into the scene. It says he was rowdy and handsome. And um, so I think not to feel guilty if you are desiring someone who you're not only emotionally attracted to, but physically attracted to. And I think Satan can get in there with just shame and guilt and condemnation if you are desiring um, just someone who you're physically attracted to. While I don't think that's the most important quality, don't get me wrong, I think it's okay to not feel guilty if you're just not attracted to someone. <laughs> I have said no to plenty of people for no other reason besides the fact that I was just not physically attracted to them. And the Lord gives you desires. Um... In Psalms 37, 4, it says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, which I think partially that is your desires for a spouse. Now, do you have to have the realistic expectations? Yes. Like, am I going to marry a Hallmark model guy? Probably not. <laughs> but I think to just kind of, I hate to use the word subtle, but that's the only thing that's coming to me, but to settle for someone who you're not attracted to, I think it will be really hard to fully love that person. And I know some people who like looks don't really matter to them. I have a friend who married a guy and I was just like, okay, <laughs> but she didn't care. Like it wasn't something that mattered to her. So I think we are created differently. Some people do not care about the appearance of someone else, which is awesome. But I also don't think that is uh, means for condemnation if you do. I think you can hold on to the hope that you are going to find someone who you're physically attracted to. Now, having like a ridiculous list of, oh, they have to have brown eyes, blue eyes, they have to have six-pack abs or... <laughs> I don't know like what your list is but if it's super like crazy maybe just pray about okay god what things on my attraction list are really from you and reasonable and which ones are like kind of crazy and unreasonable and I think the Lord will meet you there as you have a time of prayer before him and just asking him to refine really what you're looking for um I just know in my own life, I've struggled with this fear. I've struggled with the fear of being really forced to be with someone who I was not attracted to. And God, thankfully, has given me a peace about that. And in my 20s, it was really bad. Like, I would just, I would obsess, 
obsess over it. Like, I would be like, oh man, God is gonna make me marry someone who's like shorter than me, who's super skinny and never has been in the gym in his life. <laughs> and I would like lay in bed and think about how terrible that would be. And like, God has just really revealed to me that he loves me and he's not going to put me with like some skinny, scrawny dude who's shorter than me. <laughs> like, And I'm not saying that's bad. Like if that's something you are interested in, we're not all the same. And that's really the cool thing is there's someone out there for everyone. And I'm just really tall and I like to work out. So I want someone who's tall and likes to work out. <laughs> but some women like really skinny dudes and short dudes because they're short. So God has made a wide variety of different people. So I think in that it's okay if you are physically attracted to one certain type of person, whether tall or short or athletic, non-athletic, we all have different tastes. And that is kind of the excitement for you personally, however your body style is, is there someone out there who's like, that's my type. And I think that's a really cool thing about the Lord is he gives us different desires. He gives us different attractions and we're not all the same. And so I just really want to encourage you to just relinquish that fear over to the Lord. If you've been struggling with, ooh, God's going to put me with someone who I'm not attracted to. He's just not going to do that. He's not going to force you into a relationship where you are just not attracted to that person. It's it's just not in God's design. He wants you to be with someone who you love fully. And really, truly, if you're in a relationship where you're just not feeling that attraction, I feel like in the long run, there will be temptation to like not be faithful to that person, to begin to resent that person, to feel like, oh, well, I just married you because God told me to or whatever. Like, that's not fair to that other person. So I just really want to encourage you to hope and wait for that person who, like, you have to do a double take, like, who's this new person? <laughs> you know, someone who you are going to really, truly love and cherish and I just um, pray that this video encourages you to continue to wait for that uh, godly spouse who you are attracted to. And I'm going to put a few verses in the comment section about just um, also character traits to look at and kind of the other side of the coin. I talked about really the physical aspect, but also other qualities that are really important to have in a godly spouse. And looks are definitely not the most important, but I do think that they are a part of it. So hopefully these verses encourage you that the Bible does talk about being attracted to your spouse and it does, um, I think just kind of encourage you that it's okay to want that. <laughs> Um, so anyways, I pray that you have a blessed day and thanks for watching and hope you come back next time.